Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal this morning. Today we're going to be riding on KTM's 2020 200 Duke. So without further ado, let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here she is, KTM's 2020 200 Duke. This is the latest addition to KTM North America's Duke Naked Bike lineup. Now, this is now positioned as the entry-level Duke machine. So we have the 200 Duke, we have the 390 Duke, we have the 790 Duke, we have the sensational 890 Duke R, and we have the top dog of them all, the 1290 Super Duke R. So five sport naked Duke motorcycles to choose from. Now, KTM already had a very nice entry-level machine in the 390 Duke. Why? introduce an even smaller displacement 200 duke well they wanted a motorcycle that was even easier to ride and even less expensive and while the 390 duke's a great bike it's still fifty five hundred dollars this retails for four thousand dollars so fifteen hundred dollars less expensive I love the styling of this bike. Look at this machine. It looks just like the rest of the Duke family with that steel trellis frame, partially exposed subframe, long swing arm inverted WP fork, BYBRE, which is Brembo's Indian subsidiary, radio caliper. Very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle. If I was 16 years old, oh my god, I would absolutely totally want this thing. I would beg my parents for it every night. And uh, when I was a kid, if they made these bikes, god, my life would have been so much different. Probably be racing MotoGP right now. Just kidding. But enough talking about this bike. Let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys, here it is. Good old-fashioned mechanical key. Thank you, KTM. This bike, oops, I stalled it. This bike has the older style LCD dash. That's one of the reasons why KTM was able to get the MSRP below $4,000. They had to cut costs somewhere. But sitting on this motorcycle, ergonomically, this thing is quite comfortable for a three quarters size motorcycle. Now, yes, it is a small bike, dimensionally, but I like that everything is very well proportioned from the seat to the handlebar to the foot pegs. Everything makes sense, and it's all sized appropriately in relation to each control input. Some commotion there, so we'll just go around them. All right, guys, we're going to go on a little bit different route today. Something a little bit more fun. You know, break things up and spicing up the old ride. So ergonomically, very well proportioned machine. I like the low seat height. I like that the seat actually has some, some size to it. It's not super small. And if you're a bigger human, you're going to have some room to sit on the saddle. It's not super tiny. You can tell the handlebar has, it favors smaller riders a little bit. It's pretty narrow. It's got a little bit extra inward, rearward sweep. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that this riding position and this ergonomics package is bad for a, a bigger rider. It, it, it works really well. Power. This thing is powered by a 199cc single cylinder liquid cooled fuel injection fuel injected engine this engine is not the same three is not based off the 373cc single that powers the 390 duke this is an all new engine design and ktm they really know how to make single cylinder engines it's really amazing how these these engines keep evolving uh, I was I've never really been into you know big singles those really aren't my thing I'm more of a multi-cylinder kind of guy but this 199 cc single KTM is making great strides in the rideability now 
its other single cylinder engines, they always vibrate. They vibrate so much and it's so off-putting to me to have a street bike that vibrates excessively. This 199cc engine, this thing doesn't vibrate crazy style. It definitely has vi engine vibration, but it isn't off-putting. It doesn't make your hands fall asleep. It just adds to the ride. So good job KTM for finally alleviating that super buzzy uh, engine dynamic that you guys have had with some of your other singles. Uh, power wise, this thing puts out right around 22 horsepower at the business end of the Michelin Road 5 rubber. And for only having 22 horsepower, it's actually quite surprising how peppy of a bike this thing is the thing comes off the line pretty decently if you're ready to rev her out to its red line and not afraid of working the six-speed gearbox rev limiter of course tells you when it's to shift if you can just cut catch that thing at the right time look this thing's got pretty decent get up and go for a 22 horsepower bike as you can see we totally smoked everyone in our rear view mirror Speaking of the mirrors, they have a nice view of what's going on behind you. You know, the en engine vibration does mute the usefulness of the mirrors a little bit, but again, it's not excessive. Uh, very nice power plant. I like the way this thing shifts gears. There's no miscogs between it, each of the six forward gears. The clutch has a nice responsive action the pull isn't too light nor too heavy and it's an easy motorcycle to launch whoa the sneak in front of these guys here and away we go guys back in business Suspension rides really well over the bumps. It does have less suspension travel than the 390 Duke. Now the 390 Duke has right around six inches of suspension travel. This only has 4.6 up front and five in the rear. So a little bit less suspension travel, but the damping characteristics actually pretty good this thing sucks up the bumps really nice yet it doesn't have too pogo-y of a ride we spent some time riding this bike at the go-kart track if you can even believe that and this bike performed really well in that around that smaller asphalt circuit the engine has enough pep to run through the gears i think we got up to fifth gear at apex raceway at socal so enough power to have some fun the bike has decent cornering clearance really the cornering clearance is the only real limiting factor in how hard you can ride the bike and the suspension it it worked well there it got a little bit fast in terms of rebound but not terrible definitely not out of its element by any means and the OE fitted Michelin Road 5 tires they did a great job uh, I really liked how easy it was to achieve knee dragging lean angle there without scaring yourself ABS calibration this motorcycle has Bosch enabled ABS and the ABS works really well you definitely have to be a little bit smooth on the front brake lever when you're at the racing circuit. If you grab the brakes too abruptly, it will make the ABS cycle a little bit more aggressively than you'd want. But as long as you're smooth on that initial lever action, the ABS works quite well. Of course, here in the display menu setup you can manually disable rear ABS KTM likes to call it super moto mode so you can disable the rear ABS and slide the back of the bike while you're coming into turns we didn't really feel the need to do that this bike just doesn't 
it doesn't have enough power to accelerate so that sliding where you'd want to slide the bike that just kills too much momentum for me personally and you need all the momentum you can get with a small displacement bike like this so personally I, I don't really need to use ABS slide mode on this bike but it's a neat feature if you want to show off for your friends when you're coming into turns again this LCD dash display the 390 Duke and pretty much all other KTM motorcycles now have a fancy pants color TFT screen. This is the older style LCD, but it works good. The, the fonts are a little bit scrunched and a little bit hard to read, but you still have a gear position indicator, instant fuel mileage, a fuel gauge, keep tabs on the 3.5 gallon fuel tank. We've averaged right around 51 miles per gallon. Uh, we've ridden this motorcycle mostly at very high RPM so if you ride this bike at a little bit lower RPM you're definitely going to get better gas mileage as you can see this instant mileage calculation has us at 85 mpg right now in top gear just cruising at 53 miles per hour we're going to get on the freeway here in a bit guys and report on its freeway pedigree so we'll check in back with you guys in a little bit all right guys here we are getting on to the california interstate and this 199 cc engine has more than enough power to ride on the freeway which i was surprised i didn't think it was going to but it actually does of course this motorcycle is freeway legal in the state of california you have to have an engine greater than 150 cc to operate on California freeways and this bike has that engine. So here we are, top gear, 84 miles per hour and we are pulling some high RPM. In fact, this motorcycle is only capable of an 87 mile per hour top speed. Wow, that may seem a little bit low to a lot of you guys. In actuality, 87 miles per hour here, it gets the job done. I've spent a lot of time riding this bike between where I live and Irvine, California. That's about a 40 mile freeway, 50 mile freeway slog. And this thing does pretty good. I like that the suspension soaks up the pavement inner imperfections well. It, it has enough passing power to pass cars and the engine vibration, we talked about this before, it's not excessive. So this is a totally freeway capable motorcycle despite what I had initially thought about the engine being too small. Of course, with a 340 pound curb weight, this thing is just crazy agile. It's like riding a mini bike. And that is another plus when operating a motorcycle wherever you are. You want a motorcycle that is nimble and apt to move when the when you need to move the motorcycle and position in a different lane. So absolutely freeway capable and I really like this bike guys for four grand, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, we're gonna check in back with you in the curvy stretch of road. Talk about the handling a little bit. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Well guys, there's nothing like riding a small bike fast and that is exactly why this bike is so entertaining to ride. We are going uphill right now, fifth gear, throttle pin, 66 miles per hour. The engine is definitely laboring right now when we climb this medium mountain grade. But at the same time, it's kind of fun. It's almost like you have cruise control on, except instead of the electronics holding the throttle in a certain position, it's the engine which is limiting the speed of the bike. You keep the throttle pinned. Kind of fun. And again, for a 
340 pound bike this thing handles really good it's exceptionally agile it's got a decent level of stability when you're leaning it over those michelin road 5 tires gosh they work so good even though that's more of a sport touring tire in this application of sport for this duke 200 duke they work perfectly and that in essence is what the duke 200 is for it's for someone who wants to experience sport motorcycling just in a safer way a way that's not going to hurt your wallet or your body you're just going at so much lower speeds and the motorcycle is just so friendly to operate all right guys we've crested the hill and we can get back up to our 87 mile per hour top speed spent a good time good deal riding this motorcycle at night and that's another difference between the rest of the duke lineup to achieve that four thousand dollar price point this motorcycle does not have led headlamps this has conventional halogen lighting and the halogen headlight actually works pretty good although it looks dark in the video i could actually see fairly well now the setup is not even close to as good as an led setup that ktm uses on its street bikes but for a four thousand dollar bike the halogen bulb headlight works better than other halogen bulb bikes I've ridden in the past which is pretty decent so definitely not bad but to be fair once you go LED you're never gonna want to go back LED lighting is just so awesome and the headlight on the 390 Duke and 390 Adventure just are awesome they make riding at night more fun and safer Gosh, this thing is a hoot for a little bike to ride around town and then the canyons on. If you and your buddies all have this bike, oh my God, you guys are going to be racing and loving it. Well, guys, there she is, KTM's 2020 Duke 200. I really like this motorcycle. I rode it off initially and just thought it was going to be just some dumb entry-level motorcycle, but it really is anything better but it is versatile, it's comfortable, it has enough pep to get my blood moving, and the styling on it, my God, it looks just like the rest of the Duke bikes. That trellis frame, that neat uh, subframe, and how it, the, the, the rear tail of the motorcycle is partially exposed. This is a very, very good looking motorcycle. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick. Right to the top. 200 or 390, is the 200 safe enough for highway speeds? It absolutely is. It absolutely, totally is okay for freeway speeds. I would and did commute on California Interstate on this bike, no problem. I was very surprised. Is this thing more fun than a Grom? Yes, it is more fun than a Grom. Well, Groms are still really awesome because you can really get wild on, on those mini moto Groms and do crazy stuff that you might not feel comfortable doing on a full size or a three quarter size motorcycle. So, so Groms are still awesome, but for bang for the buck, $4,000, you get one heck of a motorcycle for four grand. What's better for a new rider? This is CB300R, Z400, MT-03. Well, those other bikes don't really compare because, well, the CB300R does because it's a single cylinder. The other bikes are multi-cylinder bikes. You're gonna get more power, more performance. You're gonna be able to go farther and faster on those bikes. So if you want something that you're not gonna outgrow quite as quickly, I would recommend those bikes. But if you're like a 16 year old kid or someone who's just looking for just a very, very light and easy to ride bike that they can bring to the go-kart track and whale on and, and just want something that's very versatile, very light and pretty sporty, 
this 200 Duke would be it. I personally would buy the 300 CB300R. I love that bike. I literally love that motorcycle. I would buy that over this just because I like that thing so dang much. But still, this bike kicks butt. What's the point? Isn't it too small for America? That's what I was thinking, but this thing's versatile. It goes freeway speeds. You can ride it in a sporty manner. It's got a big passenger seat so you can bring someone with you. Uh, this bike is totally capable on American roads. Why no LED indicators, no LED headlight or turn signals or taillight? Because they wanted to keep that MSRP at $4,000. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Enough Q&A. Would I spend my $4,000 on this 200 Duke? I absolutely would buy this bike. I like it a lot. I love the way it's styled. I like the performance of it for the, for the, for the displacement. I like that it comes with a two-year warranty. Two-year warranty on this bad boy, right from the factory. I also really appreciate that even though this motorcycle is manufactured in India, KTM has worked very closely with its technical partner there to, to elevate the fit and finish and build quality. This is a very nice looking motorcycle. The welds are better. The way all the parts put to, are put together is better. There's less orange peel paint effect on some of the components. The fasteners look of higher quality. And I really have to give it to KTM. They've really come a long way since sourcing their small bike manufacturing to India. So kudos to you guys, KTM. You guys are doing a great job. That's a wrap, guys. Make sure to check out the article on MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my written content goes. Make sure to thumbs up this video if you like it. Thumbs it down if you don't. And leave us a comment why. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.